Snow Valley, April 3rd, 2010, the day before Easter, eight-year-old Keeley Proctor, a black diamond level skier, was having fun on the slopes with family and friends. But suddenly, shockingly, Keeley's life was in jeopardy. We were just about 100 feet away from getting off the ski lift and when I saw Keely, I thought she was just leaning over and the next thing I know I turn my head and she's falling about 30 feet to the ground. This is Sheriff Air Rescue, I am Charlie Bravo, 11 Tango. We have a female, approximately 8 to 10 years old, who fell into the chair. She is unconscious, but we found this. No external blood. Please stand by. As soon as I heard she fell, I skied down right away, and I was the first one there. And I've been skiing my whole life. I've never seen so many ski patrol come to a scene right away. We knew that we had a fall from height, and so we suspected that there was going to be a pretty significant injury. It's the first thing that struck me about Keely is when I got on scene, she wasn't crying. Her color was off, she looked shocky to me, and you know, when I asked where did she fall from, I'm, I was estimating at roughly 30 feet, and I'm like, oh, this is bad. This is what we call a big sick. I'm just handing the gear in, handling the radio traffic and waiting. Come on, come on, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. And we were off scene in, inside of nine minutes and we were in base in 11. And they put her up on the table and I said, Keely, it's mommy, I'm here. And then I was trying to joke with her. And then afterwards, I hoped it wasn't my last words to her. And she w was um, never crying and then um, and then there was a lot of activity. When we got the call, we were up in the air in about four minutes or so. Uh, it's about a seven minute flight to the landing zone. The ambulance had rolled up right at that time. Within five minutes, we had her in the helicopter. And then it was about a six or seven minute flight to Loma Linda from there. She was in the ER from the time we got the call, um, probably, 20 minutes. When she finally got there, they called me back and said that her blood pressure was very low coming through the doors um, and that they're, they're already giving her three units of blood just as she, right immediately when she came through the doors of the ER. As we're starting to resuscitate her in the emergency room, trying to figure out exactly what her injuries are, including taking her to the CT scanner, it became obvious that she had really massive internal injuries. She had, in essence, completely pulverized the right side of her liver and just completely shattered her kidney on the right hand side and in essence she was starting to exsanguinate or bleed into her abdomen and she was basically doing her best to bleed to death internally right in front of our eyes. When we first arrived we couldn't see her. Finally we were allowed to go into the ER and see her and she had like she had so many people working on her but she saw us. She was alert. This whole time she was alert. <laughs> we went directly to the operating room where we opened up her belly and it was just completely full of blood and clots and we do what we call a damage control laparotomy where in that circumstance it's very hard to identify the exact point of bleeding. So we pack the abdomen as tight as we can just to put pressure on things and get it to stop. And in this case we were able to do that enough to get everything down to a dull roar. So she had most of her major bleeding stopped. We were able to get her more or less resuscitated upstairs, but it was obvious she was still continuing to bleed. He's telling us, your daughter's bleeding to death. Losing a lot of blood. We can't stop it. She's getting a new unit every 15 minutes. And there was a point where she was bleeding probably four to 500 cc's an hour while we were trying to catch up on her resuscitation. That's mo even more than just the initial blood loss that she had in her belly. I looked at him and I said, well, how much blood can a person have be given? Can you just keep getting, can you keep getting blood? We actually ended up almost replacing her total blood volume two or three times just to 
keep up. Their blood count was still um, dropping, so they were transfusing her during this time, and at that point, recognizing that her liver was pretty injured, and she was too sick to have surgery on her kidney at the time. They asked us to do an angiogram to see if we could identify any areas that were still actively bleeding and then plug them up from the inside. He managed to coil off and plug up that little vessel and stop that last little bit of bleeding. And once that was stopped, after a lot of blood products, by the way, she, at that point, it was just like somebody had flipped a switch and she started getting better. They always said, we're not out of the woods, we're not out of the woods. A couple days later, when everything is controlled, no more bleeding, then we could take her back to the operating room and uh, debride that part of the liver and remove the, the kidney that was so badly damaged. And then with everything under total control, then a few days later we were able to get her all closed up. And uh, she went home, looking great. Here's a little girl who there is absolutely no question that she would be dead today if we did not have blood products available to give to her. And the only reason that we had blood products available to give to her is because kind-hearted and well-meaning individuals in the community donated that blood. It is a fabulous service that we can provide to our fellow men. Giving blood products in a circumstance like this that that where we have a trauma center, we have an oncology center, we have all kinds of patients who in various circumstances end up needing blood products. And blood is life-saving, there's no question. And in this particular case, there's no question that she's alive today because of blood product donation. We gave Keely a chance by being able to give her the large volume of blood that she required. I mean, I think it's a, it's a good blessing because out of it, a lot of people started donating blood. And I think uh, I heard from people from Livestream that that first day, they've never seen so many people in the waiting room. Hopefully that they continue to do that. I've heard of other people that they continue to do it, continue to give blood. And that's a, that would be a blessing in itself right there. How do you express that somebody just saved your life by just giving their blood to you? <laughs> it's such an easy step to save lives. You know, you don't have to go to war, but, you know, or be a, a safety officer. You know, you could be just an ordinary person and you have the ability to save a life within 45 minutes. Keeley Proctor received a total of 30 units of blood products that were available thanks to Lifestream donors. Her surgery required 12 units of red blood cells, 4 units of platelets, and 5 units of plasma. She received an additional unit of red blood cells, 4 units of platelets, and 4 units of plasma over the remainder of her hospital stay. This happened Saturday night before Easter. And I kind of enlightened her to, it's kind of like Easter morning, you know. She was almost as dead as you could be the night before, and the next morning, kind of came back from the dead. It was really nice. It was just uh, a remarkable feeling to see that kid turn around. I still need to try to um, not run up and hug her every time I see her at school because that'll embarrass her. But I just get so excited when I see her. Um, and when she's so focused on piano lessons and her vacations or her school or stuff that a child is supposed to be focused on um, that she's this was simply a bump in the road this wasn't a, a mountain or a wall that she crashed into that it happened and she's fine now and that's just as close to a miracle as I've ever experienced Livestream distributes over 200,000 blood products and services annually to more than 70 hospitals in San Bernardino, Riverside, Orange, and Los Angeles counties in an effort to fulfill their mission. We help save lives by connecting donors and patients through the gift of blood. Livestream. Give hope. Give life. Give blood.